coming up on Eagle Vision News, students get fired up about Midnight Madness. Thousands take to the streets of Long Beach for the Beach Street's Midtown event. And we show you a glimpse of how the biggest supermoon since 1948 took over the sky on Sunday. Welcome to Eagle Vision News. I'm Jennifer Jensen. And I'm Brooke Carlucci. So much has happened this past week and so much more is to come with the holiday seasons just around the corner. The Grove and Orange actually just had their tree lighting and we have an awesome Instagram video by this user, Lindsay Ray Sims. Look at those lights. That is beautiful. And already before Thanksgiving, wow. You know, Christmas just seems to be getting closer and closer, but we can't forget about Thanksgiving just a couple weeks away. Just a couple weeks. <laughs> Let's get into our top stories. A massive crowd rallied in Los Angeles for the fourth day of protests against President-elect Donald Trump. This was the biggest anti-Trump protest in L.A. so far, but it was also the most peaceful. LAPD estimates that over 8,000 people marched through the streets in downtown to voice their opinions about the election results. It all started at 11 a.m. Saturday morning and continued for over three hours. Streets were shut down from MacArthur Park all the way to the U.S. Federal Building. As a precaution, police closed several on and off ramps of the 110 and the 101 to prevent protesters from getting onto the freeways. The protest remained peaceful and no arrests were made. If you looked up in the sky on the nights of November 13th and 14th, you witnessed a rare and historical sight. The biggest and closest supermoon since 1948 appeared over the Earth's horizon. A supermoon is a full moon that coincides with the lunar orb's closest approach to Earth. This past Monday, the moon was just 221,524 miles from Earth and hasn't been this close since January 26, 1948. The next supermoon won't be until November 25, 2034. In the case that the storm steered clear, the beauty of the supermoon will be the best of its kind in a span of 86 years. Early Monday morning, a fire broke out in the Angeles National Forest. Firefighters are now working to battle the burning blaze north of Lakeview Terrace. The fire was reported at around 5.43 a.m. near the 13300 block of Little Tahunga Canyon Road. The fire burned more than an acre, but the extent of the damage is still unclear, according to the Los Angeles Fire Department. The L.A. County firefighters and the LAFD are both currently working to contain the flames. You know how ice cream looks perfectly smooth and delicious? Well, that's because of an ingredient called emulsifiers. The chemical is used to increase food's shelf life and improve its texture. On the flip side, it turns out that same chemical also could cause cancer. A study led by the Institute of Biomedical Sciences at Georgia State University and published in the Cancer Research Journal found that the ingredient emulsifiers may alter intestinal bacteria that leads to inflammation and colorectal cancer. In the study, mice were fed emulsifiers in their water for three months, and the result was tumors grown in their stomachs. Now the medical recommendation is to minimize the intake of processed food and focus on homemade food. Emulsifiers are found in almost all processed foods, including ice cream, chocolate bars, store-bought bread, soda, and margarine. Now we have our reporter Alyssa O'Hara with the Biola update. Alyssa? Yes, it was a very busy weekend. Biola was packed this weekend with prospective students and parents as the 2016 University Day kicked off last weekend. Participants from all over the country stayed overnight at Biola to get the chance to explore the different parts of the community. The event officially opened Sunday evening and began with an introduction from the admissions counselors and testimonials from current students. During the next day, participants got the chance to check out classes, tour the campus, and attend different types of info sessions. A parade of students rushed into Chase Gymnasium as the annual Midnight Madness kicked off this past weekend. Midnight Madness is one of Biola's most spirited events where student athletes and performance groups showcase their talent on the gym floor. The Kingsmen kicked off the night with an a cappella performance of the national anthem. Then, the Biola cheer team and Zopak followed up with their best dance routines. 
Afterwards, the women's basketball team wins against the men's team in a friendly competition. The night closed off with a classy performance by the Biola dance crew and, of course, the massive balloon drop. Thanks, Alyssa. Well, Veterans Day was this week, and we have reporter Josh Clausen to give us a look at Norwalk's annual Veterans Day ceremony. Veterans Day, November 11, 2016. The Color Guard marches with flags and ceremonial arms in honor of both living and fallen veterans. Every year, the city of Norwalk puts on a special event to thank the men and women who served in the United States military. Dozens of veterans, civilians, and public officials came to Norwalk City Hall today to honor all veterans past and present at the annual City of Norwalk Veterans Day ceremony. To be married to a, a veteran, I've learned a lot about what it means to be a patriot, and coming to these events is really important. The ceremony was open to the public, and people of all ages attended and participated. Several public servants, including the Sheriff of Los Angeles County, Jim McDonald, spoke at the event. Your dedicated service to our great country allows us to enjoy our democratic freedom. Norwalk Mayor Mike Mendez hosted the event. We should be celebrating the love for our living here in our country every day and be thankful of it. And I think veterans, we should be, anytime we see a veteran, we should say thank you. I'm proud of what I've done. and. If I had to do it again, I'd do it with no problem. The ceremony concluded with a medley of themes from all different military branches. This is Josh Clausen with Eagle Vision News. And now we have reporter Brenna Kaw in studio with us today to show us the latest baby name trends that are hitting Hollywood. Brenna, what's up with these interesting names? Yes, Brooke, there's so many. Dream Kardashian is another name to add to the ever-growing list of bizarre celebrity baby names. Dream, born to Rob Kardashian and girlfriend Black China, was given birth this past Thursday morning. Dream is just one of the many unusual names within the Kardashian family. Kim Kardashian West has her own set of uncommon names for her two children, a daughter named North and her younger brother Saint. Along with these peculiar names comes a whole list of celebrity children's names that are out of the ordinary. From John Legend and Chrissy Teigen's six-month-old Luna to Beyonce Knowles and Jay-Z's daughter Blue Ivy. These celebrity baby names are beginning to have a major influence on parents around the U.S. Many of the unique names chosen by these celebrities are beginning to crack the top 100 charts for most popular baby names. A Texas man accused of stalking singer Taylor Swift has been charged with a lifetime restraining order. Frank Andrew Hoover was held Friday on a charge of violating a protective order in Kansas that required him to stay at least 500 feet away from the Grammy Award winning artist. The 39-year-old suspect came within 50 feet of Swift after following her to the airport prior to her concert Tuesday evening. Reports say that Hoover sent around 30 threatening emails to Swift's father after he was upset about not being able to meet her after a concert. Thanks, Brenna. Well, now reporter Kiara Bernal shows us what Long Beach is doing to promote a car-free environment. The city of Long Beach gathered its local community for one day by taking over Anaheim Street from Pacific Coast Highway to Orange Avenue to help bring people together on foot. The event was to get people on their feet and to ride bikes instead of using a car when, for example, running an errand nearby. The event that was open to the public even offered rental bikes for a small charge if a person who wanted to partake in the event didn't own one themselves. The organization also had a few goals that they hoped to accomplish in mind. A few cons were brought to light during this event that expected a turnout of 80,000 people, such as buses being shut down from picking up passengers on Anaheim Street during the time, and businesses were concerned about their customers not being able to get to their stores. It was said, however, that this event would actually bring in more customers. Overall, the event had a great influence on getting people to be more environmental savvy by leaving their car at home and using a bike or public transportation instead. This has been Kiara Bernal, Eagle Vision News. 
So Jen, were you able to see the super moon last night? I was. Actually, I was out on a walk last night and it was absolutely stunning. So pretty. And I have a picture of it for you if you follow me over to the Weather Center. All right, everyone. So here it is, a picture of the brightest super moon that we have seen in 68 years. And it was truly a sight to be seen. This picture behind me was taken in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's a time lapse of the moon last night. And it was absolutely stunning. Now, we're not going to see another one of these for 18 years. And if you do the math, that's 2034. So I really hope you guys got a chance to see it because it was absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look now at our current conditions here in La Mirada. So this morning started out cool. It was hopeful, hopeful for fall weather, but unfortunately it got really hot this afternoon, up to 83 degrees. And then it's gonna dip back down into 58 later this evening. Let's take a look now at our national conditions. So on the East Coast, they're gonna be seeing their typical cool fall weather in the 50s. But if we move on over into our side over on the West Coast, Washington and Oregon, they're seeing extreme precipitation, typical for them in the fall season. And unfortunately for us here in California, we're not gonna be seeing any of that. It's going to be in the mid 70s and high 60s for us down here in SoCal. Let's look now at our seven day forecast. Today, we're gonna to see 81 degrees, and later on this week, temperatures are just going to be getting cooler as we go on down into the week. So as we see tomorrow, Wednesday, it's going to be 70s, and then it's only gonna reach down up into 76 degrees for the rest of the week. So we're gonna have a really nice weekend, and fortunately, you can go to the beach and enjoy that nice, cool weather. So that's all I have for you in the weather studio, but let's go ahead and head on back into the studio. Well, that's all we have for you tonight, but just one more thing, the EV team did the mannequin challenge, so make sure to check that out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we'll see you in two weeks. And happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> have a good night.